Herbert Hart by Dr. Jorge Núñez. H. L. A. Hart was an English legal and political philosopher. Uh, he used to work at the School of Law, the University of Oxford, here in England. Uh, he still he was and he still one of the main figures in legal and political sciences, and his works are still being discussed. We can see here some of his uh, most important uh, publications, not uh, the only ones. Uh, this very brief uh, presentation will refer to only one of them, the concept of law. Uh, and in a very brief manner we are going to introduce the main uh, features that will uh, start the analysis of this particular work. The concept of law is very clear from the start. Hart is going to tell us how he's going to do it and what he's going to do. He is going to try to define the concept of law. In order to do that, he'll try to answer the question, what is law? How is he going to do that? He's going to refer, first of all, to the theories and one particular author that was involved at that time. That author is John Austin, his predecessor in Oxford. We can see from this quotation here at page 20 from the concept of law that Hart, once again, is very clear in telling us that he will follow Austin and he will try to learn from Austin failures. The very first pages of the concept of law have to do with trying to resolve this question. Hart finds out when uh, we ask uh, the question, what is law? The first answer people tend to give, even on the street, is defining the law as Austin used to do. Defining the law by one of its potential elements, coercion or sanction. Um, he unravels this uh, mystery or this enigma by telling us or showing us through the example of the gunman that in some situation someone may be forced to do things or someone may feel obliged to do things and that, that has little to do with law. There is a second question related to this issue that has to do with whether law has to do with morality or not. The last question, whether rules have anything to do with law, and in fact whether rules are legal at all. Very briefly, Hart tells us that by trying to define the law, by using coercion or morality or even rules, we are, st we are still missing some elements. We are not giving a proper, a complete definition. At page uh, 16, he says, and I quote from the concept of law, there are, of course, many other kinds of definitions besides the very simple traditional form which we have discussed, but it seems clear when we recall the character of the three main issues which we have identified as underlying the recurrent question, what is law, that nothing concise enough to be recognized as a definition could provide a satisfactory answer to it. End of quotation. In the following chapters, that is, chapter 2, 3 and 4 from the concept of law, Hart will include references to Austin, his predecessor in Oxford, he will bring about Austin's theory, he'll introduce some elements, and after doing that, he will criticize some of these elements in order to show why his predecessor had failed in defining law. In his main work, called Province of a Jurisprudence Determined, John Austin defined the law as a rule 
lay down for the guidance of an intelligent being by an intelligent being having power over him or as well a body of rules fixed and enforced by a sovereign political authority as we can see from his definition we have all the elements that may characterize what me, we may think of a positive law theory. We have a sovereign, that sovereign has to do with men creating law for men. The distinctive element that divides morality from law have to do with the existence of sanctions of, or punishments in law exclusively. In consequence, for Austin, law has to do with a command that has to be general and it is an expression of will. Will of a sovereign who is a superior, a determinate authority, habitually obeyed by the rest of the population, the bulk of people, and who is not in the habit of obeying anyone else. The key feature is that this command must include a sanction, a sanction with certain peculiarities, certain elements that must be present. That sanction has to do with the harm, pain or evil, which means it may be related to freedom, to possession or to life, and that sanction or punishment must be applicable. We can see here some of the critiques that Hart makes to Austin's theory. The, the, the core definition is the one that I referred to in the previous slide. The main point Hart is going to make is that if we follow Austin's definition of law, we only focus on certain kind of uh, norms or certain kind of rules. These rules are duty conferring rules or duty conferring norms, which means we are ignoring any other kind of norms or rules. The ones uh, he mentions, uh, uh, Hart mentions as examples, are the powers conferring norms. Um, he puts several examples, the rules um, to have a contract, the rules of thought, etc. They don't include a punishment per se. If we follow the definition addressed by Austin, we would be missing this kind of rules and we wouldn't be considering this kind of rules as law. Another criticism as an example, the concept of a sovereign Austin uses. According to Hart, Austin fails to show that the lawmaker, the king, people in a democracy are bound by the law they make. Also, by characterizing a sovereign in such a way, in an Austinian way, we are going to have two other problems when we have a transition from power to power or from government to government, suppose an election, and we are changing prime, prime minister or a president, and the second related issue, persistence. What would happen with the, that legal system that was created by the previous authority? This presentation has to do very briefly with hard his main uh, work, The Concept of Law. The introduction, chapter 1, Persistent Questions, pages 1 to 17, and incredibly briefly, chapters 2, 3 and 4, in which Hart refers to Austin's work. In the next presentation, we are going to refer to Hart's proposal in the following chapters, chapters 5, 6, and 7, of the concept of law. Many thanks for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me using my Twitter account. 
um, which is London, like the capital, 1701. I'm Dr. Jorge Núñez. Thank you very much once again. Bye.